MACD, Stochastic, Bollinger Bands and RSI are four of the most famous and common indicators among traders. But when we use each of these alone, we get poor results. In this video, I want to show how by combining these four indicators, I got good results in the long term backtest. Introducing a strategy alone is not very interesting, and should be backtested in the long term of at least 6 months or 1 year. So I used PineScript to backtest this strategy. First, I will introduce the strategy, which is actually a combination of these four indicators, and then, to make it easy to receive signals from this strategy, I will code it step by step in PineScript. And at the end, I will show the one year backtest results. So watch the video until the end, and before continuing the video, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon, so you don't miss the next videos. I have optimized this strategy on APE USDT, but I believe it can be optimized on other pairs, with changes in the settings of the indicators, or in the source of the strategy. So I open the APE chart, and go to the 3 minute time frame. The first indicator that need to be added to the chart is the MACD. I do not change any of the settings of this indicator. The second indicator is Bollinger Bands. I add it to the chart from the list of indicators. In the indicator settings, I change the length to 35. I change basic moving average type to RMA. And source to OHLC4. The next indicator we need is stochastic. K length must be changed to 21, and K smoothing must be changed to 3. The last indicator we need is RSI. I change its length to 9. And the source to OHLC4. Its time frame must be 5 minutes, that is a higher time frame. And finally, from the style section, RSI based MA should be unchecked. Now our chart is completed, and the four indicators mentioned at the beginning of the video have been added to the chart, and their settings have been changed. Now we need to know the rules for opening long and short positions. We open the long position, when these conditions are met. 1. In the MACD indicator, the MACD line must crosses over the signal line. 2. In Bollinger Bands, the low of one of the last 10 candles, must break below the lower band. 3. In the Stochastic indicator, K line must be above the D line and the D line must be less than 20. 4. RSI must be less than 30. If all the mentioned conditions are met, we can open a long position, and we exit the long position when one of these conditions occurs. 1. When a candle crosses over the upper band and in the stochastic indicator, the D line is above 80. 2. When we receive a short signal. 3. When the price drops by 2% from the entry price. The rules for opening a short position are the opposite of the rules for a long position. So we open a short position when these conditions are met. 1. The MACD line crosses under the signal line. 2. In Bollinger Bands, the high of one of the last 10 candles, must breaks above the upper band. 3. In the stochastic indicator, the K line must be below the D line, and the D line must be above 80. 4. RSI must be above 70. We exit the short position when one of the following conditions is satisfied. 1. When close of a candle crosses under the lower band, and D line is less than 20 in the stochastic indicator. 2. When we receive a long signal. 
3, when the price is 2% higher than the entry price. Now we need to code this strategy in Pine script, so that the complications are reduced, and we can easily receive the buy and sell signals automatically. So I go to the Pine editor and open the new strategy. A name for the strategy must be chosen. The first indicator that we need to add to the source is MACD. The MACD indicator exists as a function in Pine script. We use its default settings, which are numbers 12, 26, and 9. With this function, we get the MACD and signal lines and histogram. The next indicator we need to include in the strategy is Bollinger Bands. So, I use Bollinger Bands source code, and copy and paste it into the strategy code. We need a function that determines whether, in the last 10 candles, the low of one of the candles has gone below the lower band of Bollinger Bands, or not. If this has happened, this function returns true. We also need the inverse of the above function. In fact, another function is needed to determine whether the high of one of the last 10 candles has gone above the upper band, or not. The next indicator we need is stochastic. It is better to use the source of this indicator. So I open the source of this indicator and copy it and then paste it in the strategy source. Finally, we need the RSI indicator. I use the function of this indicator that exists in Pine Script. In the introduction of the strategy, it was said that we should use a higher time frame, that is 5 minutes. So, to use RSI in a higher time frame, I use the request function. Coding of indicators was done. Now we have to code the rules for entering long and short positions. The first condition is that the MACD line must be above the signal line. The second condition is that the low of one of the last 10 candles be below the lower band of the Bollinger Bands indicator. So I use the function I wrote for this purpose. The third condition is that in the stochastic indicator, K line is above the D line, and D is under 20. And the fourth condition is that RSI should be below 30. The conditions for entering a short position are the opposite of the conditions for entering a long position. It means that the MACD line is under the signal line, and the high of one of the last 10 candles penetrated above the upper band. K line must be under the D line, and line D must be above 80. And the RSI should be above 70. Now, the way to exit the open positions should be coded. When we have a long position, if the close of a candle crosses over the upper band of the Bollinger Bands, and the stochastic D line is above 80, we close that long position. And when we have an open short position, if the close of a candle crosses under the lower band, and the stochastic D line is below 20, we close that short position.
we should also have a stop loss to avoid large losses in trading. I consider the stop loss as 2%. In fact, when the current price differs from the entry price by 2% in the opposite direction of the position, we close the position. Now I want to write a code that if we have a long position, and the price drops by 2% of the entry price, that position will be closed. And if we have a short position, and the price goes up by 2% of the entry price, that short position will be closed. Ok, now I save the changes and add the strategy to the chart. Apparently, in order to generate long and short signals, the settings of the indicators must be changed. I go back to the source, and in the Bollinger Bands code, I change the length to 35. I also change the type of moving average to RMA. It is better to change the source to OHLC4. By making these changes, during about 1.5 months, only 9 transactions have been made, and the result is not good at all. Before continuing, from the strategy settings, from the properties section, I set pyramiding to zero and, set the order size to 5% of the equity. I go back to the source again, and this time I change the inputs of the stochastic indicator. K length must be changed to 21, and K smoothing must be changed to 3. After making the changes, more signals are generated, but the performance is still not good in the period of 1.5 months. When I backtest the strategy over a period of one year, the profit chart is green and rising, and about 67% of trades are profitable. But only 149 signals have been produced in one year. I go back to the source and change the RSI length to 9. The results are slightly better, and more signals are generated. The size of transactions should be equal to 5% of the balance so that the results can be determined better. In the source code of the strategy, in the RSI indicator, I change the source of RSI to OHLC4. This time, the results are much better within 1.5 months. 73% of trades are profitable, and 67 trades have been made during this period. The improvement of the results can be seen in the one year backtest. The profit chart is green and rising, and there have been drops at times, that are compensated later. The amount of profit has increased a lot because the number of signals has increased. Until now, we have not included the trading commissions in the calculations. Now, if the trading commission is added to the calculations, what changes will be made in the profitability of this strategy? From the strategy settings, I set the trading commission to 0.04. There is not much change in the result. Both in the short term and in the long term. And that's really good, because trading commissions eat up a lot of profit, especially on low time frames. Going back to the source, I want to make a small change in the way we enter trades. Instead of the first condition of entering a long trade that the MACD line is above the signal line, I make the condition that the MACD line crosses over the signal line. 
and instead of the MACD line being below the signal line, I set the condition that the MACD line crosses under the signal line. By making this change, in the short term, the efficiency decreases a little. In the period of one year, the efficiency also decreases a little, but this decrease is not very significant. This strategy was optimized on one cryptocurrency, and may not work on other currencies and other pairs with the current settings of the strategy. This was just a study to code step by step a strategy in PineScript, and try to continuously improve it until the results are acceptable in the short and long term. Can this strategy be made even better? Definitely yes. But it needs more time and more work on it. Thanks for watching the video. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel, and turn on the notification bell, to get notification whenever I upload new videos.